Hey, Shani from SpeedCubeView.com. So this is the Molecube, and this took me quite a while to solve. The way it works is each side works kind of like what you would do with a Sudoku, putting one through nine in each box, but you can only have one of each color on each side. And this is much more difficult than a regular three by three. So I'm going to kind of talk about how the puzzle works, how it came to my solution, and at the end I'll go through a solution. So if you are planning to get this and you don't want that to be spoiled, stop the video kind of right now or else you're, you'll see how it works and how it came to my solution. So solving this from the bottom up is, I would say, near impossible to come to a solution because just trying to get it for each piece to be in the right spot there's so many options and so many different ways of doing it. I, I don't, I, it's really difficult to do that without writing things down. So I first wrote things down. Now I had actually a paper before, but it's been a few weeks and I don't know where that went. So I will re-demonstrate this for you. So what I did was I made kind of just a puzzle, a little layout, what you would see on a scramble sheet. And hopefully these boxes are going to be kind of precise or close to a square as I can do. Okay, and what this would be, oh, that one's too short. Um, the front, the top, the bottom, left, right, and then that's the back. And so what I did first was I just started drawing everything out. I made it so I tried putting the colors on, writing it that way, and then solving it. That still did not work because I still ran into problems. Then it hit me that there's got to be some sort of pattern that the puzzle is in. Now, I'll say this. If you really are worried about solving it, you could always just take a photo of it before you scramble it up or look it up online and look at it that way. But I thought there's got to be some sort of pattern. And so I went through each of the colors to see if they were centers, edges, or corners. Because there's nine different colors, but there's only six sides, so they can't all be centers. And so I went through and wrote down the colors. So we had white, black, and then we had red, orange, yellow, green, light blue, dark blue, and I'm going to call that purple. I'm sure that might be violet or something else, but I'm going to call that purple. So white, I noticed, was a center, an edge, and a corner. So I put center, edge, and then corner. Well, I'll do capital. And so then I looked at black, and black had a corner, an edge, and a center. So we had center, edge, corner. And then red was an edge, edge, edge. So I'm going to put three edges. Orange was corner, edge, center, and so on. And so then I started realizing that any of the colors that had a center also had one edge and one corner. Anything that didn't have a center either had three edges or like green had two corners. And then light blue was a center edge corner. Dark blue was a center edge corner. And purple was three edges. So then it hit me, okay, they've, they've got to be separated this way. And so instead of just trying to solve it randomly, I tried solving it where I put down the random center. So I always had, let's say, um, white was on top. This was dark blue, orange, yellow, light blue, and then black on bottom. So I tried just writing it down that way and saying, okay, if white's here, I've got to have an edge there and a corner here. That almost worked. I was so close, but I couldn't get that to work. Then I had one other realization. And this, I guess, it will be kind of a hint if you want to stop after this. But that since there's these patterns, white and black are opposite centers. So the corners and edges have to be opposite because then yellow and orange will do the same thing and blue and blue will do the same thing. So I took this white one and I just kind of put down 
that this corner will go here. I think I just sort of did it randomly. And since that's that white corner hitting those spots, then the edge has to be right here because that way you have one in each box. So black has to be opposite. Instead of being at this down corner right here, black's gonna be up at that top one. So we have here, here, and here. That's where that corner is. And if we have black, 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 that means the edge has to be right there. That's the only place it can be now to not interfere with anything else. So then I did the exact same thing with yellow. And so I took yellow and I made that corner be opposite. So over here, so let's see here, where's that actually on this puzzle right now? Um, oh yeah, so that would be right here, here, and here. And if that's there, that means the edge has to be right here. And so then orange will be the exact opposite of that. So since the yellow one was down here, the orange corner is going to be over here, orange, orange, orange. And then that means that edge has to be back here because if I put it right here, it's going to interfere with that one or be in the same side, I mean. So then we have, make sure this is right, yep. I'm uh, not right there, I meant, because that's gonna interfere with that, back here. Now this took me a little bit more longer to think about when I was putting out all these letters and, and trying to write them out, but I just have the cube next to me to kind of go through how I thought that through. And then we have the dark blue and light blue and same thing. If dark blue is here, I put the corner kind of back in this opposite area. So we have dark blue, dark blue, and then that makes this one dark blue, which means the edge has to be right here. And then lastly, we have the light blue one, which will be the same idea. So I put the corner right here. So this is light blue, light blue, light blue, which means the edge has to be right there. Green, I realize since there's two corners, they have to be on opposite spots. So whatever corners are opposite, that's what we have left, which is right here and here. Now I actually think when I wrote it out, I did the corners and those three edges first, and then I ended up having to erase them because it didn't quite line up. So I had green, 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 and then this other corner, green, green, green. And then same thing for these last three edges, they have to be, kind of have some sort of pattern. And so for the red, all of these are on these different faces. So that way, this red, I've got one right here. And then up here, which means the other one has to be right here. And then lastly, we have the purple. So we've got right there, right here, and right, whoop, something's wrong here. Oh, that's not right. The orange, when I put that orange one down here, that should have actually connected to this right here. And then this one's gonna be the purple. So if you're watching this up until now and saw that was yelling at your screen, my apologies. But then once we got to there, then it's solving it like a three by three. And you have to know how to solve a three by three to do this because if I got to the last layer, so you can't just insert the pieces like it's a, you know, a jigsaw puzzle. And if we get to this last layer and we find that we need to switch these two edges and these two edges, well, at this point I know I can do a T permutation and solve that. But if you don't know T permutation, different permutations, different things like that, it's going to be next to impossible to solve. Now you don't need to do any OLL, so that's completely skipped. It's just putting in the, maybe the cross, first two layers, and then PLL. And that's it. So thank you very much. Hopefully this helps you guys if you're looking to solve it. You could just take this and use that as a cheat sheet, but maybe even finding out the answer on your own, like not looking at this and doing that is fun. This was a lot of fun to do. 
Now that I know how to solve it, I could probably do it again, but I would probably still need to write it down on a piece of paper. Maybe a fun challenge would be to solve it without the paper and just kind of visually think of where a piece would be, and maybe use commutators to move pieces around and solve it that way. So maybe that'll be a challenge in the future. Thank you very much. Hit like, subscribe for more content like this in the future. And as always, stop by speakview.com for more news and reviews.